Thanks, everybody. Um, and I appreciate everybody joining us this evening. I had a little bit tough time getting in for whatever reason, but everything's good. I uh, just want to give a shout out to Chris Gio and thank him also for uh, helping us with everything. And uh, we have as guests with us this evening, Jonathan Cleck. And so we've got some really mind blowing information to, to talk about. Um, I literally was blown away by the things that uh, Jonathan has shared with me in the um, past couple days or so. So anyways, Jonathan, let me give you a chance to um, give a shout out to the listening audience. This is your first time here joining me on Truth Frequency Radio, but those of you that follow my work, you know that um, we've been a longtime friend and been confirming witness for each other in, in regard to truth and the work that we do. Jonathan? Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for having me, Zen. Um, really, always fun to hang out with you. Um, you know, before we get started, um, I guess I really kind of want to throw out kind of a blanket statement. You know, for everybody that's listening, um, uh, I'll be the first one to admit this. Um, this information that you're going to see tonight and hear um, is is so profound. It's it's so mind-boggling um, that it might, you know, it might unseat you a little bit. It might uh, overwhelm you a little bit. Please, please do not have a knee-jerk reaction. And what I mean by that is condemnation before investigation is the highest form of ignorance. Um, Einstein said that. Uh, Albert Einstein coined that phrase a long time ago. And what he means is, you know, before you start throwing tomatoes at people and yelling obscenities and saying hateful things, it's always better to investigate it and look at it because um, what y'all are going to see tonight and and what you're going to be party to or witness to is it's mind destroying. It's literally mind destroying. But the cool thing about it is it's all in the gospel. It's it's all in the Bible, uh, because if it wasn't, I might just, you know, step out in front of a city bus that was going real fast because it is absolutely mind boggling. Um, the information tonight. Um, here's the other thing. Hopefully um, Dave's been able to get into a chat room where he's able to give you guys information so you guys can get a visual link because this comes with visual information and. We have put together an extensive visual link that if you're listening to the radio, you can open another window and you, you can click on the link that Dave is putting, I guess, in y'all's chat room. Um, I, I'm on another chat room right now and I, I see Dave in there and Dave can let me know whether or not he's been able to put it in there. By the way, Zen, I also had Dave. Dave sent it to you as well. Yeah, so you, uh, I do have it. Okay. Yeah, because it's it's super important that you guys are able to see what we're talking about because uh, tonight's program comes with not just biblical um, evidence. I mean, the the biblical um, scr the scriptures are going to totally one hundred percent be supported by uh, the evidence that's being produced via, and I do mean via the Holy Spirit. And, and I also want to say one thing, please, please. I've seen people freak out, people that call themselves, quote, Christians. And they, they start throwing these rocks saying, you know, really, really, uh, really bad things. And the thing is, you got to be very careful um, because just like uh, when Jesus, you know, cast out a demon and they said he cast out demons by the power of Beelzebub, um, and Jesus was, he said, well, you know, if I cast out uh, demons by the power of God, uh, then the power of God is among you. But if you ca if you say I cast out demons by the Beelzebub, but it is by the power of God, then you've committed the only unforgivable sin, which is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. I'm here to tell you tonight, absolutely, 100%, all this information is a gift of the Holy Spirit. I have the gift of knowledge and discernment and the gift of wisdom, Zen seen it, 
I mean, the, the people that go to our programs and some of the YouTube stuff have seen it. Um, also, just for the record, and, and I'm saying this for your bit, benefit, not not to, uh, you know, pump myself up, but I want you to understand, um, you know, the Lord's used me to lay hands on people that were, I, I mean, completely blind in, in one eye. I've um, had uncurable vision problems that have had cancer, colon cancer, and and literally instant, instantly they were healed. So before you start throwing rocks, I'm asking you, please don't do that for your own safety. Okay, it's okay to, if you want to make a disparaging remark or something, that's one thing. But don't start uh, treading on that real thin ice, you know, where you start um, saying it's from a different spirit because it's really dangerous. And it really bums me out to see people do that. So I wanted to say that first, please. Okay, and I, and I mean that. Please look at the information. Take it to the Bible. Take it and, and look at all of it against the scriptures because I absolutely guarantee you the scriptures will bear out every bit of it. So that's what I wanted to make sure I said tonight. Is that... All right. Uh, well, I, Kathy, um, I did send Kathy the link to the show notes so she can also put it in the chat room. And also, um, I want to just tell people about a four part series that Jonathan and I did over several weeks. Um, and it's called The Secret of Secrets. And you can find that on YouTube. Uh, made them all available freely as we do all of our work. Um, but in that four part series, we covered in great detail what is going to be the foundation for some of the discussion that we're going to be alluding to this evening. And so if you want to get in, in great elaboration, um, more understanding and deeper insight into the things that we're going to be talking about this evening, um, definitely check out that four part series. It's, um, Jonathan Cleck, The Secret of Secrets. And as I said, in a series of shows, we talked about all of these scriptural references, which are connected in Revelation to those things that we will also be expounding upon this evening. And so um, please do check out that that series. But Jonathan, I want to give you a chance to um, just kind of lay the story out of how it was, you know, and if you need to go into any background information to kind of lay the foundation for uh -huh. this as revelation. Which yeah, I, yeah, I think I think that needs to happen. I, I yeah, really certainly. do. Because I look, I don't know y'all. I mean, the people that are listening, you, a lot of you don't know me. I don't know you, and you guys don't know really what's going on. And and for me, I mean, I've literally come, and I know it to the end of of what I was supposed to do for the Lord. And it started back in 2002. Um, my personal testimony is is on YouTube. Um, so you can go vet it. What's really cool right now is. See, I've already kind of like in a court of law where you do a deposition. Whatever you say, you know, you go into that court of law, whatever you said on your deposition, uh, man, the other attorney is going to hold you accountable to it. He's going to say, well, didn't you say this? Well, why are you saying this now? You know, that's kind of the way that an attorney will grill you. What's really awesome about what's going to happen tonight is everything that I've said in the past will be 100 percent supported by everything that comes out tonight. And it's mind blowing. I mean, it's literally the coolest, most insane gift God could literally give us in, in physical um, manifestation of the scriptures. It's mind boggling. So very quickly, I, I want to just very quickly jump to the way I got saved. I got saved in a very supernatural way. I got saved in an alley in the back of the St. Saint Saint Anthony Hotel. The whole thing is on YouTube. The night I got saved, I had to make a choice whether or not uh, I was willing to get killed because we were we were in a very uh, dangerous situation. Um, uh, this young lady and I, and I was trying to get her out of town because I had cracked open this information. And uh, we were being followed, and we were having our life threatened by people that meant to do us very serious harm. So anyway, long story short, uh, I ended up in the back of this alley at about 12.30 a.m., um, and I made a choice to go through a door. And the night I made that choice, um, I ended up in this alley. And when I came down these stairs, 
Uh, there was an angel waiting for me. And now I know, listen, I know that sounds crazy. I know how that must sound to you guys. You must be going, yeah, okay, whatever, an angel. His name was Michael. And if you'd like to go look at my, my personal testimony, I wish you would. Because it will be completely vetted. So anyway, as I came down these stairs, he stepped up to me and he said, pray with me, my brother. And I stepped down and I prayed our father with him and uh, water and light came down on me. And as soon as I was filled with the Holy Spirit, and I do mean anointed in that alley. Um, then he looked at me and said, now you say a Hail Mary. Now, everybody stop right there and don't freak out. I knew a Hail Mary was wrong somehow, even though I was raised Catholic. But the moment I got saved, I was so full of light that the indwelling spirit of Christ was in me. Whereas before, I never knew anything was wrong with saying a Hail Mary. But now all of a sudden, I knew something wasn't right. And he looked at me and he said, well, he nodded his head like, go ahead. And as I said the words to this other prayer, I felt life and light leaving my body. Now, listen very closely. I felt all the life that had just come into my body. I was born again. I mean, it was like getting beamed down to the planet from Star Trek. I was literally born again. And then all of a sudden, when I started saying the words to the Southern Prayer, I felt life and light leaving my body. Now, listen, that is part of my testimony. I put that on YouTube years ago. So now... Here it is all these years later, and everything has come to light. Everything's going to uh, be upheld. Everything I just told you is going to be completely upheld. A lot of people may say, that's crazy. I don't believe it. That's okay. I don't expect you to believe it, to be honest. Um, so, so anyway, what I'd like to do is I would like to have everybody, if you can, open up the show note link that we gave you. I want to show you all where this starts. It's very important that we just get a little bit of the foundation going because what you're going to see tonight is literally the end of the road. Where, where did we come from? Who are we as, as a group? You know, what I mean is everybody on planet earth. And I do mean everybody on planet earth. And I know that's a big statement. I would question anybody that said these words to me. I'd be going, really? And I'd say, okay, well, let's see what you got. And so, let me let me start you at the very beginning. Okay, so let's open your show notes. By the way, there uh, anyone anyone that's listening to this program tonight, um, Dave, please put the you now link in. We have a a video. Um, we have a video venue called You Now, and I can have uh, Dave put it in the show notes where uh, for this this program, what wherever the um. Wherever the chat room is, Dave, would you please put in the you now um, link? Now, if you guys go to this other link that Dave's going to put in the chat room for you, um, you'll have all, you'll be able to watch this on your computer screen because I'm going to go to these images that are the show notes, but I will also call out what number is what number we're talking about. Okay, Dave's already done it. He says the link is in there for for this program. So let me uh, go ahead and. Oh, hey, John, let yeah. me also say, for those that are going to later catch the archives, I will put the show note link in the description for the show so that you can find it later. Go okay, ahead, brother. Cool. Okay, so here we go. Before we start, I want everybody to hear. I'm going to quote Isaiah 29, 15, and 16. Isaiah 29, 15, and 16. I'm going to give you two different versions of the Bible in order for you to very easily understand what it says. Okay, it says, those who try and hide their plans from the Lord are doomed. They carry out their schemes in secret and think no one will see them or know what they are doing. They turn everything upside down. Okay, that's Isaiah 29 and 15 and 16. Let me give you the King James Version. Okay, the King James Version says, woe unto them who go to great depths to hide their plans from the Lord. Their works are in darkness, and they say, Who seeth us? Who knoweth us? Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. God's a potter, we're the clay. So if you want to see what's going on, you want to see this 
this hidden enemy that's in the darkness and you want to see what their dirty nefarious plans are, Isaiah said, then turn everything upside down and you'll be able to see what their dirty plans on uh, plans are. By the way, the church of Satan uses an upside down star and that's called the sigil of Baphomet. Okay, now I'm going to apply that. Right now, I am going to apply Isaiah 29, 15, and 16, and I'm going to use an image, and I'm going to use the gift that the Lord God gave me to bring light onto what this scripture means and what he's talking about. So let me show you this. And it goes back to when I got saved in the alley. I told you that when I said the Hail Mary, I felt death. I knew it was wrong now. I No one told me saying the Hail Mary was wrong. I was raised Catholic, but as soon as I was saved, the moment I was saved, when Michael said, now you say a Hail Mary, I just knew it was wrong. I don't even know how I knew it was wrong, except that the indwelling spirit in me was, had changed. And so anyway, when I said that prayer, I told you I felt death. I felt light leaving my body. Okay, so if you go to your show note link, you'll have these rows of pictures. There are three pictures in every row. I want you to go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows. And at the very first picture on, on row seven should be L4. I want you to go to the middle picture. The, it's called L5. It says CLEC-05-2816 L5. Okay. So now I'm going to click on that image. And if you're watching you now, you're going to see a couple images. The image on your left is an image of the Virgin right here. I told you when I prayed that prayer in the alley, I felt death. I want to show you the image to the right now. It's an image of a sheep with its tongue sticking out. I'm going to go ahead and point to the eyes. What I'm going to do is I'll point to the eyes for you so it makes it easier. Here is an image. Here is the, the eye right here. And here is the eye right here on the other side of the face. As you come down the face, here is the nostril. This is the tongue sticking out of the mouth. This is the face of a sheep right here. This entire thing is the face of a dead sheep. So why is it? Why is it? When you have an image of the virgin and you turn the image upside down, the entire cumulative sum of the image becomes a dead sheep. Well, remember, I told you my personal testimony, as soon as I got saved, uh, I was told to say a Hail Mary. And I told you I felt death. I felt life leaving my body, light leaving my body. Well, Isaiah says, those who try and hide their plans from the Lord, they turn everything upside down. Okay, well, it's the virgin. So what does the virgin have to do with, with dead sheep? What does that mean? Well, what are their plans? What does the virgin have to do with a dead sheep when you turn it upside down? Well, that's a very, very interesting question. Uh, it's where death came from. It's actually the origin of death and where it entered into the human race. Uh, for those of y'all that, you know, don't know your Bible, um, and, and even those of y'all that do, why don't you open up to Genesis 3? So if you open up to Genesis 3, we're going to just very quickly... Talk about the Garden of Eden. And this is something that Zen and I, I mean, this is, this is just a gift that God would allow us to understand it so simply and how easy it really is to understand. In Genesis 3, it says, The serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman. Now, I have people that are probably in your chat room. If Alyssa's in your chat room, Alyssa, if you can open up eSword or Eric, anyone that's in the Zen's chat room, I would like for y'all to see what the definition of the word woman means. Most people don't even know it. That they just read and says, and he said unto the woman. Well, if you, if you look at what the word woman means in Hebrew, it means adulteress. So why would the word woman mean adulteress? She, I, we haven't even, she hasn't even been with her husband yet. Exactly. That's exactly why the word woman means adulteress. Because she hadn't even been with her husband yet, but yet she was adulteress. 
she was she's being called the adulteress. So the serpent said to the woman, what did God tell you? And the woman said to the serpent that we may eat of the trees of the garden, but the fruit that is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it. Neither shall you touch it. I would like for Alyssa or Eric to put the word touch into y'all's chat room. The word touch means to lay with like a woman. So there's other words for touch in Hebrew. So if this word is the word that's in there, and it means neither shall you lay with like a woman, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, and the, by the way, the word for woman is always adulterous. So I'm going to say it like that. The, and the word for a serpent is nakash. And the nakash said to the woman, to the adulteress, you shall not surely die. For God doth know in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Well, that was true. That part was true. The eyes were opened and we have become as gods. The problem is we did die. We died to our creator. And so now we were cast into darkness. And this that's what this is going to be about tonight. We're going to show you in this program, we're going to try and just show you very simply, probably, in the, if not probably, by far the most profound thing I've ever seen since I've been saved. And when I say that, that's a big statement because I have seen some stuff that most people uh, probably couldn't wrap their brains around. It's so profound and it's all from the Lord. And I want to make that very clear. It has nothing to do with me. I'm serious. I am a worthless sinner saved by the grace of God. I'm serious. Uh, God had mercy on me. He predestined me to do what I'm doing. And he gave me a gift that is absolutely, uh, it's just, it's mind boggling. Sometimes I, I have trouble believing that I can actually, you know, appropriate these things that, that he's given us. So I want to start with some imagery now. So let's just go ahead and start applying the, the Bible and applying it to images. Okay, so. Let's go to Revelation 9 because we're about ready to enter that time right now. We're at the door. I'm here to tell you, I'll just say it straight up plain English. I'm a harbinger. God called me to ring a bell. He called me to sound an alarm in the end of the world. That is the reason I got saved the way I got saved. I was called to sound the alarm. Jesus is coming. And um, kind of like John the Baptist was called to announce the arrival of Christ. I'm called to announce the arrival of the end of the world and the second coming. That's what I've been called to do. And I, and the Lord's given me the evidence to show you. So let's look at Revelation. Let's look at Revelation 9. Okay. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit. And the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Okay, here you go, folks. Verse 3. There came out of the smoke locusts. I don't know how many people ever looked up that word. I, Zen, have you ever looked up the word locusts? What, the meaning of it? No, actually, I have not, which is uh, really surprising. Yeah, I know. Because right? I try to do that, you know, yeah, with everything. <laughs> I, I, I do too. I, I, because, the, you know, if you really, really, really want to know what's going on in the Bible, if you, if you look up the definitions of every single word, it will give you an insight that will blow your mind. So out of the smoke, there came locusts. I want to read to you what the definition is. It says a locust as pointed or as lighting on the top of vegetation. You know the way locusts, when they fly in a swarm, how they're all right above the, 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 the grass line or the line of the, the crops that they're destroying? They literally just come in a swarm and they light right above the line of the crops and they land on them and then they destroy them. So we have these locusts that are coming out of the pit. And it says, and they come out upon the earth and it was given to them 
power. The word power, I want to read to you what the word power means because there's all these locusts that are coming, guys, and they're coming out of the earth, the, the bottomless pit. And the word power, it, it means this. In the sense of ability, it means force, capacity, freedom, mastery, and superhuman token of control. Wow. So it's a locust because it, it flies and it lights, you know, like a swarm of, of locusts. They have power. They have superhuman power and influence. And as the scorpions, well, let's look at the word scorpions. And as the scorpions of the earth have power. So they have power as the scorpions of the earth have power. The word scorpion is Scorpios, and it is an obsolete word. And it has a meaning to pierce from its sting. So, hey, Johnny, we're, yeah. we're at the okay. first break. Okay. We'll be right back, everyone. All right, welcome back, everybody, for our second segment. Um, Johnny, I'm going to just go ahead and turn it over to you, man, so you can get into this. And All right. All right, well, let's keep breaking down Revelation 9 real quick, and then let's crack this open. Here, but we got we to get this out on the table because this is what's going to happen. So I'm going to show you physical evidence of this. It's, it's just mind-blowing. Okay, so here we go. So here come these locusts that are coming out of the earth. They're coming upon the earth. And to them was given this power as scorpions of the earth have power. And the word scorpion means to pierce from its sting. So they're going to have these stingers. They're going to be able to pierce with them. And, uh, and then it says it was commanded to them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing. Don't you think that's fascinating? I, when I read it, I was like, you know what? It, it means exactly what it says. They're not here to hurt the grass. They're not, because what are, you know, what are locusts? Locusts are, you know, this swarm of a bug. And what they do is they literally decimate, what, the grass and every green thing. That's what they do. Everything that's in their path is devoured. And so it's, it says, you know, they're not going to hurt the grass. They're not going to hurt any green thing. Neither are they going to hurt the trees. But here we go. Only the men, those men, and it says the word men is man face, that is human being, which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. The word for seal, it means a stamp impressed or literally uh, or figuratively a seal as in a fencing to protect from misappropriation. So there's they're they're off limits. Whoever whoever does not have this seal of God in their foreheads will be fair game. I think it's fascinating that they brought up any grass, any green thing, any tree will not be bothered by them. But all those men that don't have the seal of God, you're you're going to be bothered by them. Now here it comes, Revelation 9, 5. And to them, I want you all to look at the definition for them. This is wild. The word for them is autos, autos, kind of like auto, A-U-T-O-S, autos. Okay, you know what it means? It means a backwards baffling wind. Well, guess what? I don't know if anybody know, saw when Obama gave his speech up there, you know, uh, in the Denver Broncos stadium. And he kept saying, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. If you play it backwards, it says, thank you, Satan. I think it is absolutely mind boggling. It says, and to them. And the word for them is a backwards baffling wind because that's who their king is. Abaddon. It was given to them that they should not kill them. And that word kill means to outright kill and destroy and slay. But that they should be tormented. And the word torment means to torture, pain, toil, torment, and vex. And they should be tormented five months. And the torment 
was the torment of a scorpion from its sting when he striketh a man. So you're going to be stung. And in those days, men shall seek death and shall not find it. And men shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. And it, I mean, so I don't, I know right now if I wanted to die, I could do it. I guarantee if I wanted to die, I could go do it. But it says right here, they won't be able to do it. And I, I would, I would, I would propose to you that it's because they'll be incapacitated. I, I'm just, it, it's got to be something like that. And so as we read on, it says the shapes of these locusts were like unto horses prepared for battle. And anyway, so they're, they're unleashed on the earth. These scorpions or these, these locusts. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and drop some bombs on you. Um, let's go ahead and look at some images. But before we look at the images, I want everybody to think, uh, uh, Zin, what are, what the, the Nazca lines, right? It's called the Nazca lines in Peru. Yeah, right? in Peru, right? Yeah, in Peru, we know we have the Nazca lines, right? So if you're flying in an airplane and you're looking down from above, there's all these giant, you know, uh, images of spiders and lizards and other things that are on, that are on the, on the ground in Peru called the Nazca lines. And they know that no one could have done that without any, um, ability to see from above. It's just, it wasn't possible. And so, you know, there's, there, there's obvious evidence that these things were obviously done by a different race. I'm going to show y'all now in, in your photos, picture C1. You're going to have to go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you go down nine rows, I want you to look at picture C1 because I'm going to give you an example of how something from when you see it from above, it's going to change the entire way you think about what you're looking at. So I want you to look at picture C1. It's an image of St. Peter's Basilica from above. I want everybody to open it up. If, if you're looking at, if you're looking at you now, there's a really nice image on you now that you can see what it looks like. Okay. That is called St. Peter's Basilica. And that is the home on origin of Catholicism. Now, here's my caveat. Look, I have nothing against anyone who was raised Catholic or that was, or that is in the Catholic Church. I have nothing against you at all. However, I am a witness against the organization because it is demonic. And I will use my gift tonight to prove it. That's why the virgin becomes a dead sheep because they're here to kill the sheep. Okay, so here we go. Let's take a look at that whole image. If you look at it, I have it orientated to where on the right side of the screen, and I'm going to slide over there in my chair, and I'm going to point to it. On the right side of the screen, you have this giant keyhole that's it's sideways. Uh, in the old days, you know, there were keys in doors, um, and it was in the shape of a circle, and underneath the circle was a little triangle. And that's the old-timey uh, type uh, keyholes we used to have, you know, in your great-grandmother's door. And it's a circle with kind of a, a, a skirted-out apron on the bottom. Okay, well, that's what you're looking at, the entire... Uh, courtyard of St. Peter's Basilica, it's a giant keyhole. Well, isn't that fascinating? It's a keyhole. Well, if you look, if you looked up close, you'd see that all that black, uh, all that black, uh, cobblestone, it looks like snakeskin. Maybe Dave can uh, add a, an image to the show notes and I can show you in a little while, but you can go on Google images and you can, you can type in the Google images close up of cobblestone St. Peter's Basilica and you'll see it all looks like black snakeskin the entire basilica looks like black snakeskin well let me tell you what the word basilica means basilica means royal abode like home royal abode of the basilisk well so it's the royal home of a basilisk well what's a basilisk a basilisk is a legendary serpent that kills 
with its breath or with its look. So St. Peter's Basilica means St. Peter's royal abode of the serpent that kills with its breath. That's what it means. I mean, that's the translation of it. So when you're looking at this keyhole that's sideways, I want you to look now at the, at the Vatican itself. Look at the roof of the Vatican. It's a cross. The entire building is in the shape of a cross, and it's got a dome on top of the cross. That dome is going to represent pregnancy, by the way. So you have a cross, and it is upside down in orientation to the basilica. Well, don't y'all think that's kind of odd that the largest church that claims to be Christian in the world with the most number of members happens to be an upside down cross at the bottom of a keyhole? Well, let me give you a scripture. The scriptures say, woe unto you Pharisees, for you hide the key to knowledge. You don't enter the kingdom yourself and you stop others from entering. Your damnation shall be the worst. Okay, I'm going to show you another picture now. It's right next to it. It's called picture C2. Okay, guys, this is something that the Lord showed me and I literally almost fell out of my chair. I could not believe it. I very clearly heard the Lord tell me, Jonathan, look at it at a 45 degree angle. And I was like, look at what? The Basilica. And so I brought a camera in from Google Earth and I looked at it at a 45 degree angle and I went, oh my God, the entire Vatican is in the shape of a serpent made by the cross and the serpent is wearing a crown and the serpent is also pregnant. Oh, wow. I, I mean, are you looking at it? Yeah. I mean, check it out. That's a serpent wearing a crown. Now, listen, what's going to blow you away is right here at the, you see the mouth of the serpent right here? If you're looking at you blog, you can see the tip of the serpent. See the little square window right there? There's a little square window right where the tongue would come out. Well, did you know if you look from above, there's a sidewalk that comes out right there and it's got all these shiny tiles on it and the sidewalk splits just like a serpent's tongue? Wow. Yeah, it's amazing. I was like, you got to be kidding me. I was like, oh my God, the sidewalk right underneath, if you're looking from above, the sidewalk splits identical to a serpent's tongue. Just like a serpent's tongue. Well, it splits. It goes, the sidewalk, it goes straight and then it splits in two directions. Just like a serpent's tongue. So it is. Okay, what does the word basilica mean? Royal abode. Royal abode. So the home of a king. You're looking at a serpent with a crown on its head. And it's pregnant. That's, I mean, that's the way I'm trying to open your minds. Now we're going to go into the Vatican. The same place that you're looking at right here where the serpent's tongue is or the serpent's mouth or that window, we're going to go inside the Vatican now and we're going to look at it from inside the Vatican. By the way, Zen, guess what? That's where the altar is. Does not <laughs> surprise me at all. Dude, that's where the, that's where the altar is. I was like, ah, you're kidding me. So yeah, get ready, guys. I'm. I think it's time to just drop a uh, a really the bomb. Let's just drop the bomb. Okay. I hope you guys are ready. I I want everybody to allow their minds just to picture images in your mind and on your screen. I am going to give you the images. I am also going to give you my testimony. By the way, I am required to speak 100% truth. When the Lord called me the night I got saved, he told me 100% no lying. You may not lie 1%. You must tell complete truth. Otherwise, this will not work. And so that night I got saved, I was put to the test and it literally meant my freedom and I passed the test. And tonight I will give you 100% truth. When I give you a testimony, Every word I tell you is true. Okay, so here, let's go to the top of the images. Here we go, folks. This is it. This is like, this is going to be so mind-boggling. Remember, remember the thing about the scorpions? 
I had the, the locusts that come out of the pit. Okay, here we go. And don't forget, when you turn the virgin upside down, it becomes a dead sheep. A dead sheep. Um, one more footnote. Does everybody know how Peter, how Peter died? It's very important you know how Peter died. Okay, Jesus told Peter in Matthew 16, he told all his disciples, who do people say that I am? And some of the disciples said, say, some say you're John the Baptist, some say you're Jeremiah, or one of the prophets, or Elias. Everybody was wrong. And then Jesus said, who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, I say you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied and said, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, means son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven, and I will call you Petros. The word Petros means little rock. And then he said, and upon this Petra, I will build my church. And so the word Petra, when you go look at First Peter 2, it is the Petra of offense. It literally means a rock that is a snare that turns everything upside down. It is a bent sapling. It's a snare. It's a trap. So the Petra itself is a trap that turns everything upside down. Most people don't know that because they haven't looked it up. If you want to look it up, look it up in First Peter 2. Petra of offense. Okay, so Peter, Peter died, but he was crucified upside down. Well, Jesus was crucified right side up. In Matthew 16, when Jesus told Peter, I'm going to call you Petros, and upon this Petra, I will build my church. Jesus is the foundation of that church. The word Petra means mass of rock, and Peter was the first building block on the new church, and he was crucified up side down. Jesus told Peter in, in John 21, he said, Peter, your death is going to glorify God. And Peter was crucified upside down. I had to make sure y'all knew that before we started this next section. Okay, so here we go. We're going to look at picture A1. Now, I can't see y'all's chat room, so I don't know. I don't know how well everyone's going to do. I, I, when I when I do this, I look at uh, our chat room just to see if anybody gets it. I'm going to show you guys an image right here. I want you to look at the darker image. It's picture A1. It's a circle. You're going to look at this circle right here. And then you're going to look at the antenna coming out of the circle to the side. The antenna are black. The top of the circle is the head. There's the antenna. The eyes are white here and here. And down here, the mouth is gold. Well, you may say, yeah, that's a stretch, Johnny. Yeah, you know what? Here's my testimony. I saw it the other day when I was looking up black cobblestones on St. Peter's Basilica for a video. And oddly enough, that image came up and I heard the Lord very clearly say, look at it. It's a locust. And I went, wow. Oh, my gosh, that is a locust. And then I actually was working on a video that had Revelation 9 in it. And I went, oh, my God, it's a locust. It's a giant. It's a giant locust. And I'm sitting there looking at it going, no, that is that they use the building itself like they use the architecture of the building to be a locust. Well, look at it. If you're walking in the door and you're looking all the way down the aisle, I mean, if you're trying to magnify whatever your God is, wow, good job. <laughs> I was like, oh, my gosh, that's a giant locust. And, it, and that's the altar. Right up there, those four posts you see, that's the altar. And I looked at it and I go, well, that's just, that's unbelievable. And I heard the Lord say in my spirit, look at the mouth. Now, Dave's shadow should be in y'all's chat room. And so, so I, I called Dave and Dave can give a testimony to this. I called Dave up and I said, Dave, check out this image. It's a locust. And the Lord told me I'm supposed to look at the mouth. And, and so Dave says, oh my gosh, I know what that is. And I say, you know what the mouth is? And Dave said, yeah, you did, you did, you know, a video like in, you know, several years ago. And we had all this imagery from the Vatican. And he said, I remember that image, uh, that's back there on that wall. 
that's the image of that's the altar of Saint Peter or the throne of Saint Peter. I was like, really? So Dave sent me the image. Okay, this is my number one gift, folks. The the gift of discernment to be able to see what others can't see, just like that image of that dead sheep. And so I'm sitting there going, like, is that really a big locust? Oh my gosh, it sure looks like a big locust. And the Lord said to look at the mouth. And I went, okay, so uh, let me show you an image of uh, let me show you an image of the mouth. What you're looking at from way back there. Uh, we're going to go down one, two, three. We're going to go down to the fourth row. <laughs> Here's where things get fun, folks. Okay, here we go. Fourth row. We're going to look at picture A4, the first picture on the fourth row. Uh, it's the first picture on the fourth row. Okay, y'all see that stained glass window? The It looks like the sun, uh, kind of, and it's got all these gold rays going out from it. And it's got a big black chair up there. Let me show you real quick. Here's a stained glass window. It's orange. It's kind of white in the middle. There's a dove in the middle. It's supposed to be called the, the altar of the Holy Spirit or the altar of St. Peter. So here's a circle. And here's this throne that somebody's supposed to sit on. And there's all these carved images going around here. And I looked at it. And I went, wow, what, what is all that gold stuff? And as I was looking at it, I tried to zero in on it. Let me show you what the gold stuff is. Because before I show you what the whole thing is, I want you to see what's going on. Okay, we're going to go down a few more rows. We're going to go down one, two, three, four. We're going to go down four rows to we're right above the basilica images. And we're going to open up picture B1. I wanted to know what all the gold stuff was. And I went, oh, wow, check it out. It's a bunch of angels. Well, you know what? I'm an artist. I am an artist, and I know what tension is. There's a thing in art. It's called tension and movement. And I looked at it, and I went, wait a minute. All those, those are a bunch of angels, and they're being pulled into this hole. Uh, and if you look right over here, if you look right over here, here's a very good example. I want to show you one angel in particular right here. This is the back of his head. And here's his shoulder and his arms. He looks like he's in free fall position. I'm also a pro skydiver. I'm a skydiving instructor. I'm a pro skydiver. And I recognize that position. That guy's in free fall position. And I'm like, wow, he's moving towards the center. And then I started analyzing. And I started like, wait a minute. All these are heads. These guys are all being pulled in. Whoa, it looks like gravity goes towards the center of this window. Why are all these angels? Here's another one up top. Why are they all going towards the center? What is the attraction towards the center of this window? And there's a dove in the middle. I'm, you know, I'm going like, this is very, very odd. And so let's continue now. And y'all get ready because this is where things are going to come off the rails. Remember I told you the night I got saved, I was standing in an alley. Uh, well, I came down these stairs and a, an angel named Michael stepped up to me and said, pray with me, my brother. He was literally waiting for me at the bottom of these stairs at 1230 a.m. when people that were there were trying to kill us. And this angel was waiting for me to come out the back of a door that was three stories up in the back of the St. Anthony Hotel. And as I walked on these stairs that were horizontal, they turned vertical at a 45 degree angle. They hit the ground. I stepped off the stairs and Michael steps up to me and says, pray with me, my brother. By the way, he did not have wings. He looked like Alexander Siddig, who is an actor in uh, a movie called The Kingdom of Heaven. And he stepped up and said, pray with me, my brother. We prayed to the sky, our father, Water and light came down on me. I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then he looked at me and said, Say a Hail Mary. I looked at him like, why? And he nodded his head. He stepped away from me as I said the words, Hail Mary, blah, 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 blah. Life and light left my body. I told you that. 
Well, isn't it odd that Isaiah 29, 15 and 16 says, those who try and hide their plans from the Lord are doomed. They carry out their schemes in secret and think no one will see them or know what they are doing. They turn everything upside down. Isn't it odd that when you take an image of the virgin and you turn it upside down, it becomes a dead sheep? Isn't it odd that the serpent beguiled Eve? Eve was a virgin, and the first person Eve had sex with was the Nakash. That's why Cain and Abel were born as twins. Isn't that a bunch of odd stuff? Well, let me show you where it all goes to. It all goes to a bunch of angels being sucked into this vortex. And you're probably going, what does that have to do with anything? Get ready, I'm going to show you. Let's go to picture L4. It's on the same row as the Virgin that's turned right side up and upside down. I'm going to show you. One minute out from break. Okay, I want, I'm going to leave picture L4 up on the screen. And I'm just going to leave it there until we come back. <laughs> Get ready, folks. This is where everything's going to come off the rails. This is absolutely going to destroy your brains. Okay, y'all sit there and look at picture L4. And thank you, Alyssa, for posting those scriptures in their chat room. All right, All right. I'm going to share a passage really quick. Uh, it says this from the Gospel of Philip. Adam came into being from two virgins, from the spirit and from the virgin earth. Christ, therefore, was born of a virgin to rectify the fall which occurred in the beginning. One other. If the woman had not separated from the man, she should not die with the man. His separation became the beginning of death. Because of this, Christ came to repair the separation, which was from the beginning, and again unite the two, and to give life to those who died as a result of the separation in uniting them. All right, we'll be right back, everyone. Everybody, for a second hour... I'm your host, Zen Garcia. This is Secrets Revealed, and I have as guest with me this evening, Jonathan Cleck. Johnny, you there, brother? I'm here, man. I'm I'm just ready to freak out. I'm sitting here looking at this stuff. Uh, also, I was um, wanting to let everybody know that um, because of the amount and the extensive um, accumulation of all of this information that if necessary, um, we can do a follow-up next week. And so um, don't rush yourself, Johnny. You know, take your right. time, explain it in the way that you need to. And right. uh, certainly, you know, if we need to do next week and the week after, whatever, we'll we'll get it done. Okay, good. Yeah, I, I really – I'm so excited. I'm like a, a dog chasing a tennis ball right now because this is, <laughs> this is just – I'm so ready to get this stuff out of the gate. This is the end of my ministry. I mean, this is the end of it. This is where, this is the alley revisited for me. This is, this is the cherry on top of everything. This, this validated and authenticated everything I've said. And it's just so hard for me to wrap my brain around it. Um, that all this is actually, you know, actually here right now. It's just mind blowing. Um, thank you, Zen. So Welcome, here we go. Here we go. So there's a picture on your screen. Zen, are you watching Ublog or are you just look going through the show notes? No, I'm just um, looking at the images as you bring them up. And, um, okay, cool. You know, okay, got all I, that, stuff that, in the background. That's cool. So. That, I just want to know because that way I can talk intelligently about it. Okay, so we're going to go down. We're going to start on the first row. We're going to go down one, two, three, four, five. We're going to go down to six rows. And six rows down, what you're going to see is on the left picture. It's, it's picture L1. That is what's called the Holy Spirit altar um, or the altar of – or the throne of St. Peter. Don't forget, St. Peter was crucified upside down. Uh, the entire uh, uh, Vatican, the entire building itself is in the orientation of an upside-down cross. What did the Bible say? Those who hide their plans from the Lord, they turn everything upside down. Well, I'm going to show you how they turned a bunch of angels upside down. And I'm going to show you how everybody got here. And I'm going to show you where everybody is going. I know that's kind of hard to believe. Did you see all the angels that were getting sucked into that vortex? That, yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, they were easy to see, weren't they? Did they look like they were having a good time? <laughs> they weren't having a good time. I've got some other images that are close-ups of the angels' faces. They're scared. They're perplexed. They're not smiling. They're not going towards that vortex. They're afraid of it. They're like, oh, no. So what's with all the angels going into the vortex? Well, let's have a look. Let's look at picture L1. That is the actual throne of St. Peter. The window is up higher, but we cut the window off on purpose. I want you to look at the picture next to it. It's called picture L2. It's, it's the throne of St. Peter with the side-by-side -side image of a sheep. I told you the night I got saved, Michael, who's an angel, he told me that you say a Hail Mary. I told you when I said a Hail Mary, I... I could feel death. I could feel light leaving my body. I put it on YouTube three or four years ago, just like a legal deposition. So I am, I am duty bound to that testimony I put on YouTube. I have to stay with that testimony because it is the 100% truth. And I've taken a lot of flack for it. Believe me. I've taken a lot of flack from, from a lot of people for this information because the devil hates the truth. I want everybody to look at picture L2. I want you to look at the sheep at the, over at the right. You see the sheep's ears that stick out? You see that curly hair on top of the sheep's head? You see his eye over there next to his ear, right next to his ear? You see his snoots kind of black? I want you to look over to the left and look at that altar. You're looking at a sheep. You're looking at a dead sheep. Can you see it, Zen? Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> Isn't that the craziest thing? Yeah, yeah <laughs> absolutely. Especially right. since it connects with the, you know, the Virgin Mary image. I mean, just yeah. totally. And it, and it connects with it connects with the whole idea that they crucified Peter upside down. Right, they and also the parable, you know, with the wheat and the tares, and how we are having this war, the enmity between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. So, you absolutely. know, all of those things. Absolutely. So now, wait a minute. I'm going to show you guys an image where we superimpose the sheep right over the face of that altar. We're going to go down one row to, to image L4. And where I want you to look at that. That's a sheep. That's a big dead sheep. What the hell are they doing with a giant altar with a big dead sheep? And it's got its tongue sticking out. Oh, wow, that's funny. Because when I turn the image of the virgin upside down, it makes the exact same image. A sheep with its tongue sticking out. Oh, my gosh, why are they worshiping that? What in the world? Why would you possibly put an image of a giant dead sheep in in the larger, what's called calling themselves the biggest Christian church in the world. It's not. It's pure idolatry. It's the devil's church. And the sheep are the food for the devil. Well, let's look at that image again. Let's zoom out on the image. Let's look at the cumulative sum of the image. Okay, now we're looking. Y'all see the big dead sheep? I do. We're looking at uh, on you blog. I'm looking at image A4, where you can see the 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 image of the window. I'm let me go back a little bit. Wow, all the hair of the sheep on the top of the sheep's head, all the hair. I'm gonna go to image A6 because it looks better. So the hair on the top of the head of the sheep, that becomes all the angels that are going. And being sucked into the vortex. So who are the food for Satan? The angels. Wow. Do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says. Those who are worthy of the resurrection. Neither marry or are given in marriage. For they are equal unto the angels. Wow. Jesus said I knew you before. For the foundation of the world. Right. How is that possible? If you were an angel. Wow. Doesn't the Bible say in 1 Peter. Doesn't it say in verse 17. Doesn't it tell you. 
It says, and if you call on the Father without respect to persons or judging according to every man's work, pass your time of exile here in fear. What? You're in exile, people. You're a sojourner. This is not your home, but you were sent here to live out a sentence. And unless you get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, you are one of the fallen that went into the pit. And there it is, as clear as day, as obvious as it gets, and the scriptures declare it. I will use the scriptures. John 10, the Jews were going to stone Jesus. And Jesus said, for what good works do you stone me? And the Jews said, we stone thee not for good works. We stone thee for blasphemy. Because you, being a man, have made yourself equal to God. By the way, they got it backwards. He was God that made himself equal to a man. And then he said, Jesus said unto them, Do not your own scriptures say, Ye are gods? And if the word of God came unto them that are called gods, by the way, gods is fallen angels, do not the do not your scriptures say you are gods? And if the word of God came unto them that are called gods, and the scriptures cannot be broken. Why do you say I blaspheme because I said I'm the son of God? Jesus just convicted everybody. He said, you are gods. And the word of God cannot be broken. The scriptures cannot be broken. He was quoting Psalm 82. Psalm 82, verse 5. Have I not said you are gods? You are all children of the most high, but you shall die like men. You shall fall like one of the princes. Fall from heaven. Remember from whence thou art fallen. Revelation. Yes. This, this bears it out, people. This proves it. Why do you think the Catholic Church doesn't want anyone to know the truth? Woe well, unto you Pharisees. You hide the key to knowledge. Why do you think they built the whole darn thing in an image of an upside down cross that's in front of a keyhole? The reason is because they know the truth and they're keeping the truth from everybody because we are the food. That's why. And that's why this whole thing goes back to the Garden of Eden because Eve, the woman, was the target to bring down all of humanity and to bring down all of us. That was it. And that's why when you turn the virgin, which represents Eve, upside down, it becomes a dead sheep. And now I've used the word of God. I've used imagery and I used a supernatural gift to bear out the scriptures. Those are angels going into the pit. Now I have something really disturbing for you. (laughs) If (laughs) If that's not disturbing enough. Well, this should be really disturbing for you. When you turn that entire image upside down, that becomes the female reproductive system. And that that stained glass window is the vagina. And that's where everybody's going. Because it's the portal to come into this dimension. How did you get here? I know how I got here. I was birthed upside down out of my mom's vagina. That's how I got here. Oh my gosh. Why do you think Jesus came in the flesh? He came through the same trap that we went in. We had to come through a vesica Pisces. We came through the trap, everybody. Well, Jesus had to come into this dimension the exact same way. But the difference was he was born of the Holy Spirit, not the flesh. But he came through the flesh in order to destroy the works of the flesh in order to save his own children. We are God's children. Guess who's the fallen? Look in the mirror. Now the scriptures have bared themselves out. Now, for y'all, those of y'all that don't know me, I was a skydiving instructor and I owned a sunglass company called Vlad Eyewear. Vampire sunglasses. Well, I used to do the advertising and pay me and my friends and we would go to locations like Cancun or Florida or snow skiing or whatever and we would put vampire fangs on our teeth and we would take photos and use those as point of purchase ads at locations that the sunglasses would be sold. 
every single point of purchase ad that I was in, I was falling out of the sky, skydiving. I was skydiving and I was upside down with fangs on. And I always wondered why in the world is every single image of me upside down with fangs on? The Lord wanted to show me because it's a vampiric system. From the beginning, Cain and Abel were twins. Cain killed Abel. Say Cain and Abel together three times real quick. Cannibal, 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 cannibal. The whole system's cannibalistic, folks. You're either killing or being killed. That's the system you live in. The only way out of this system is to turn to the true king, Yeshua HaMashiach. And by the way, for all the naysayers, the Bible declares no one can call Jesus God in the flesh except by the Spirit of God. So listen very closely. Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, he is the Lord God in the flesh. Come in the flesh. And I'm a harbinger. And I'm here to tell you, the end of the world is at hand. I guarantee it. By the way, my name is Jonathan Kleck. Go look it up. The name Jonathan means Yahweh is given. Kleck means a messenger that rings a bell and gathers the church. And that's what I'm trying to do. That's why I'm here on, on Zen show. That's why after I showed this to Zen, I freaked out. Well, I, think, <laughs> I freaked out before I showed it to Zen. I think I freaked out for 24 hours straight. Ah! It's all been proven out. That's why all the sheep's hair, if you look at the images very closely, if you just study the image, if you look at the sheep's head, all his curly hair on top of his head turns into those angels because they're just sucking the sheep into the porthole and it's all God's children being sucked in. That's what it is. And they know it. And so there, by the way, guys, even though this is like, you know, tons of information, there's so much more information in your show notes. We could do five hours on all this stuff. And, uh, but we'd have to get into some pretty big definitions of the Sefer yet zero and these things. But, Maybe we can do that on another program <laughs> because I don't think I'm going to get over this altar thing for a while. This is the end of my, this is the end of my disclosure for me. It's just mind boggling. And Zen, you know, once again, going back to Genesis, I mean, you know better than I do what, what Genesis says about Eve, Hava, uh, desired the angel. Right. And so I don't know if your listeners have heard from the Targum and what the account of Genesis 4 is, but I think it's pretty important maybe that you, you give it to them. Yeah, sure. I'll give me just a minute to pull it up. Sure. And I'll I, share it. Yeah, and while you're looking it up, I'll just talk for a second. You know, I was talking to Zen. I said, Zen, you know, the Lord showed me in the craziest way that that Cain and Abel were twins. I mean, and then I started, I was reading the Bible. I was like, well, wait a minute. It said that, you know, the serpent beguiled Eve. That's in Genesis 3. The word beguiled means to seduce. And then it says Eve was an adulteress. And then it says you shall not touch it lest you die. The word touch means to lay with like a woman. And I said, you know, then he showed me that she only conceived once. You know, that she, or that she conceived and then she brought forth Cain and then Abel. And if you look at, if you look at the definitions in, uh, in the Bible themselves for Cain and Abel, this is, this is mind blowing. I never noticed it before. But if you, if you look at the word Cain, so it says is she brought forth Cain and this is straight out of the Bible, not from the Targum, but from the Bible. If you look at it, she brought forth Cain, you know what it says? It says Kajin. His name is Kajin. And it says, um, it's, hang on, let me pull it up. I want to make sure I get it exactly right. I want to make sure you guys get this exactly right. I don't want to get anything wrong. I want to be exactly correct. Okay, here we go. Genesis 4, and Adam knew Eve. The word for Eve is Hava, and that's what it is in the Targum. His wife, and she conceived and she bare Cain. The name Cain is Kajin, and what it means is the name of the first child, or a place in Palestine. 
Okay, Kajin also means metal worker. That's very interesting, metal worker, because of Daniel 2.43. And the last kingdom shall be the metal mixed with the miry clay. Well, this is fascinating. When you look at the word, and then when it says she brought forth his brother Abel, do you know what it says? It says Hebel, H-E-B-E-L, but do you know what it says after that, guys? It says the son of Adam. Well, wait a minute. What about Cain? Who's Cain the son of? All it says is Cain is Kajin. So by default, in, in the translation of Genesis 4, it says, and she gave, she bare Cain, Kajin, and it, it says the name of the, of the first child. It doesn't say Adam's child. It says the name of the first child. Also a place in Palestine. And then when you read Genesis 4 too, and again she bare his brother Habel, uh, his brother Habel, and it says the son of Adam. Well, why doesn't it say that Cain was the son of Adam? By default. You see what I mean? And I was like going, wait a minute. And that's when I, I, I called Zen. And I said, check this out, Zen. And Zen said, oh, my gosh, you know what the Targum says? Go ahead, Zen. Right. Also, let me, before um, I bring that up, it, Cain's name also means where it says possession acquired which is interesting because that's exactly what he was. He wasn't born a son of Adam. He was acquired like a stepson. Uh huh. Wow. Yeah. All right. And so in the Targums, the passage, and this also goes to a question that was asked in the chat room as to where do we find reference to Cain and Abel being twins? And it is in this, this particular passage. It says this in Genesis 4, 1 of the Targums. And Adam knew Hava, his wife, comma, who had desired the angel, semicolon. And she conceived and bare Cain, semicolon. And she said, I have acquired a man, the angel of the Lord. And she added to bear, meaning that she continued in her conception. She added to bear from her husband, Adam, his twin, even Abel. And so what is being described in this passage is that Hava desiring the angel is what led to her conceiving Cain because Cain was the firstborn hybrid son of the devil, also referenced in Matthew chapter 13 as being the enemy that had snuck into the garden that sowed the tares. And that, as it says in First John chapter 3, that Cain, who was of the wicked one, that the wicked one is described in the latter passages of, of Matthew chapter 13 as being the devil. The enemy which snuck into the garden is the enemy, uh, the wicked one, which sowed uh, the tares, and he is the devil. And so that's who... It, that's where we get Cain. And then she added to bear from her husband, Adam. Um, it, this was because she shared the fruit with Adam. And Adam eating also of the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Repeating the act with Eve. That the result of that was that Abel was born. And Abel, when you look up his name, means breath. Which is the reference to the creation of Adam in Genesis speaks about the breath of life being uh, breathed into his dust flesh form, which was the marriage of spirit. You know, our previous estate is that we were spiritual beings, angelic beings, and that we were married, our spirits were married with the flesh, and that's how we came to be incarnated into flesh form. And so that's oh, how that all unites. Are y'all re are y'all ready to freak out? I mean, Zen, are you ready to freak out? I'm sitting here with uh, with E sword open, and while you're reading, I'm just sitting here looking at it, and I'm breaking down these words. You ready for this? And Abel was the keeper of the sheep. Right, but, right. But, but yeah, well, no, check this out. You're gonna freak <laughs> out. And Abel was the keeper of the sheep, but but Cain was. The tiller, you know what the word tiller means? That 
the enslaver <laughs> of the ground of the country. Wow. Oh my God. I mean, I've Amazing. never even, guys, I'm not kidding. I've never even seen this. I like, what? And <laughs> Abel was the keeper of the sheep. Fascinating. And, and Cain was the tiller. The word tiller is abad. It's a Hebrew word, 5647. Primitive root. It's an implication to serve, till causatively to enslave of the ground. And the so he was the tiller, the enslaver of the word ground. And the word ground means country, earth. Wow. You gotta be kidding, man. I mean, right now? I mean, that's, that's pretty good timing, don't you think? Absolutely. <laughs> Just further it. confirming <laughs> witness, you know. That is mind boggling. Right. I'm gonna have to take a minute. Uh, just to get something to drink, okay? Yeah, no worries. We got uh, two minutes till break anyway. So once right. you uh, once you done sipping, uh, why don't you mention again where people can go to find your work, your radio programs, uh, listen to your shows, and to support you in your endeavors. You know, um, if people want to go, just see what's going on. Let me see if the show note links tonight. Um, let me see if the one that Dave put up um, has the links uh, because we have a different show note link tonight. Um, yeah, there's um, there's a link that's in y'all's show notes for Before the Fire. It says BE, the number for the fire. And, you know, you guys can go there and just get kind of the information. There's um, a YouTube channel. Guy, you guys should go watch the breakdown of the Versace and the Coco and the Ian Bud Light commercial. I don't know. Zen, have you seen those? I just posted them a couple days ago. No, it's, I have not. But uh, I, I will before we do our next show, for sure. Uh, it's bananas. These are these are TV commercials for, for, for perfume. And it's the Garden of Eden. It literally shows people being enslaved in the Vesica Pisces. I'm oh, not wow. kidding. Oh, it's insane. And it's everything we've been talking about. But it's manifesting on TV, selling cologne. Right. It's, just, it's the Garden of Eden. I'm like, oh, my gosh, because we've come full circle. We're, yes. we're, we're at the end, which is the beginning for us. Right. Praise God, yeah. Right. Any, anyway, so, yeah, in the show note link that Dave posted in the chat room, you guys can just kind of go through there and look at it. There's all kinds of uh, cool stuff you can go look at. Yep. All right, we'll be right back for final segment. All right, welcome back everybody for final segment. Uh, we're going to try to cover what we, whatever we can with the time that we have remaining. This topic is so uh, encompassing. Really, I mean, we could talk about it for days on end and do hours and hours and hours of shows. Um, which we have really, we've done so many shows on this as topic and, uh, still, you know, we're still learning things new, uh, which is just mind blowing how all encompassing and how, uh, profoundly deep this is in helping people to understand the scriptures and those that maybe have never heard about or never have studied the scriptures in this way. I guarantee you that if you open yourself to the possibilities of what we are sharing as revelation, that it will unlock and help you to understand the fullness of scripture in a way that um, helps to make so many things come to light and makes them just deeply profound. It's like uh, unlocking a riddle and having the light get turned on and being able to read and understand the scriptures in a way that uh, you probably had not had chance or or could not um, perceive previously. Johnny? Yeah, you know, the thing is, I want to bring this to, I want to bring this fight to everyone's front doorstep right now, because what you're looking at is you're, you're literally looking at the mystery of human existence. But I want to make this so real for y'all that you guys go, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I want you to apply it. I mean, I know you're sitting here looking at a giant altar 
in the Catholic Church that is a giant dead sheep, but it's disguised as what? A window and a and a bunch of angels and a bunch of guys wearing robes? No, 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 no. It's a dead sheep. Well, that means we are the energy source for these monsters. I mean, those dead sheep, don't forget. Those, I mean, the, the dead, the altar that's the dead sheep that turns into all these angels going into a vortex. Don't forget that vortex is the mouth of a giant locust. And that's what's coming out of the pit. So this is like a science fiction movie, folks. I mean, the human race has been hybridized. Now, listen, I want to read to you very quickly from Revelation or from Isaiah 57, um, because everybody knows that Miley Cyrus always sticks her tongue out and winks her eye, right? Everybody knows that. Well, so I'm going to bring this uh, fight to your front doorstep in a couple ways. I'm going to show you where that comes from. I mean, why do, have you ever seen uh, other people do it? I have. I've had a lot of people like they wink at me and they stick their tongue out when they're talking to me. Well, when they do that, I know what's behind the skin. Listen to this. I, and I've actually, you know, without belaboring the point, I walked into a Starbucks where a friend of mine was a manager. There's a kid named Alex and he would always wink his eye and point his finger at me and say, hey, how's it going, Johnny? And then wink his eye and like point at me like his finger was a pistol and he would stick his tongue out of the side of his mouth. And I told Chris, the manager, I said, Chris, I will give you, a, I'll bet you a million dollars Alex over there draws a picture of me and when he does, he puts an image of a dead sheep on my face. Okay, listen, folks, I know that sounds just bananas. I mean, that is one of the craziest, weirdest things you might have ever heard. What? That guy's going to draw a picture of you and he's going to put an image of a dead sheep on the image of you? That's exactly right. That's exactly what I said. Go on YouTube. It's called the Dead Sheep Testimony. I walked in that store two weeks later and this kid, Alex, goes, hey, Johnny, I drew a picture of you. And I went, oh, wow, really? And I showed it to Chris. And I said, hey, Chris, check it out. Alex drew a picture. And Chris's jaw just fell open. Uh, the, you know, the guy that I told this, this, this is what this kid's going to do. And he did it. I mean, how do you get that right? I'm going to show you how you get it right. Isaiah 57. Okay, the righteous perish and no man layeth it to heart. Merciful men are taken away. None consider that the righteous is taken from the evil to come. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. But now listen very closely on verse 3 and 4. Okay, this is it. But draw near hither, you sons of the sorceress, the seed of the adulterer and the whore. Against whom do you sport yourself? That means, who are you making fun of? Uh, whom do you, against whom do you sport yourselves? Against whom do you make a wide mouth and draw out your tongue? Are you not children of transgression, a seed of falsehood? It's a, a seed of falsehood. That's the same thing as a darnell from the wheat and the weeds. So the ones that are sticking out their tongues at you and they're pointing their fingers or winking their eyes. That's listen, I'm gonna take you to I'm gonna take you to John 15. I want to show you this. This is gonna blow your mind. If people ever wink at you, I had people wink at me just the other day and today. When someone winks at me, I know I'm in the presence of the enemy. I'll prove it. John 15. In John 15, Jesus said, You didn't choose me, I chose you. He said, if the world hates you, know that it hated me before it hated you. If you are of the world, the world will love its own, but you're not of the world. I have chosen you out of the world. Remember, the servant is not greater than the master. If they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. He said, so if I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But listen, that now they have no cloak for their sin. Their cloak is human skin, by the way. And he says, they'll, now they have no cloak for their sin. They hated me and they hated my father also. Now listen very closely. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. This is verse 25. But this cometh to pass 
that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without cause. So in, in John 15, 25, he's telling his disciples, hey, guys, they hated me. They're going to hate you. You know, if, if, if they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. If you were from the world, they would love you. You're not from the world. They hate you. They hated me and my father. And this bring it to pass that the word might be fulfilled in their law. They hated me without cause. They hated me without cause. They hated me without cause. Well, he said this is fulfilling their law. What law? It's written in their law that they hated me without cause. Okay. Go to Psalm 35, believe it's Psalm 35, 17. Watch this. It's going to blow your mind. Psalm 35, 17. Okay, let's see. Uh, hang on. Um, one sec. Maybe it's Psalm 39. Hang on. Let them not wink the eye. Hang on one sec. I got to make sure I get the scripture exactly right. Just give me one second to do my Google search. Make sure the okay. Here we go. Hang on one second. Uh, hang on one. Can someone throw that in the blog talk chat room? Alyssa, can you throw that scripture? In the blog talk chat room, my uh, my computer is not pulling it out for me right now. Hang on. Neither neither let them wink the eye. It should be Psalm thirty five nine. Yeah, it is Psalm thirty five nineteen. For some reason, it didn't show up in my feed. Okay, it says. Let's see. Let them, okay, here it is. So Jesus in, in, in John 15 was saying, John 15, 25 was saying, those that hate me and my father, what do they do? They hated us without cause. And it is fulfilled in their scriptures. Listen to this. Let not them that are my enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. There it is. So when people are winking at you and sticking their tongue at you, they are the seed of falsehood. They are the enemy. That's the devil in the flesh looking right at you, winking his eye at you. They hate you without cause. They recognize you as an indwelling, someone that's got the indwelling spirit. That's why they do it. That's why it says, neither let them wink the eye that hate me without a cause. Okay, now I want to go to the show notes. I want you guys to see this Arch of Titus, this Arch of Washington, this Arch of Baal, because this is going to bring the fight to your front door right now. Who are these? I mean, when it says, you know, they are wrongfully my enemies, don't let them rejoice over me, neither let them wink the eye uh, that hate me without a cause, or they stick out their tongue and they're mocking us. Y'all have no idea how many times that's happened to me. I'm like, oh, it's the devil. He's he's standing right in front of me. Here we go. If you guys go to, uh, I need y'all to put the show notes in their chat room for the 26th of April. Um, somebody also give it to Zen, April 26th. Okay, I want to show you guys on the U.S. currency. This is going to bring the fight to your front door. I told you in Isaiah 29, 15, and 16, it says, Those who try and hide their plans from the Lord are doomed. They carry out their schemes in secret and think no one will see them or know what they are doing. They turn everything upside down. Well, if you make a pentagram out of the U.S. currency, out of any of the bills, if you make, if you make one out of the new $20 bill, and you turn it upside down, you'll see the bombing of the Twin Towers. And if you flip the bill over, you'll see the Pentagon. Well, it's under an archway. It's picture T5. It's the third row down in your show notes for the 26th. And I want everybody to see this because this is going to blow your mind. There is an arch in New York City called the Washington Arch. It's the apotheosis of Washington, by the way. 
The word apotheosis means man becoming a god. What did the serpent say to Eve? Hey, if you take of the fruit, you'll become like a god. He wasn't lying. He was lying when he said you won't die. Yes, you died, but you became like a god. And so that's called the, uh, the word apotheosis means man becoming a god. That's what it means. Well, I want y'all to look at the picture of the $20 bill, which is picture T5. And if you look at picture T5, look right next to it. You'll see the Twin Towers directly under the Arch of Washington. Do you know how the Twin Towers got put directly in the center of the Arch of Washington? Does anybody know? The Rockefellers condemned over 150 buildings and they built the Twin Towers there on purpose. The Rockefellers are the guys that own the U.S. Federal Reserve. It's not even the U.S. Federal Reserve. They own the Federal Reserve. Them and the Rothschilds and the Morgans. So the guys that make the money and print the money that print images of the Twin Towers burning under an archway are the same guys that put the Twin Towers under the archway. Crazy. That's what, I mean, that's what you're up against. And say, so here's the deal. You're not going to beat them. You are not going to beat this. You can't beat this. That's the point I want to make. You have one hope and one hope alone. One and one only. And that is to overcome death through the body and the blood of Christ. That is your only hope. You have, you've been, look, we came through this portal called the vesica pisces we came through a, a female vagina we were birthed into this prison head down we get born into our prison head down our flesh is our prison why do you think the bible said flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven and then jesus said verily i say unto you unless you are born again born of the spirit so see w coming one direction we fell we were spiritual beings and then we were born into the flesh and we were trapped. Now to go back to heaven, you have to be born of the spirit. You got to go the other direction. Do you get it? You come one way into the flesh and the only way out is to go the other way. You got to be born of the spirit. It's called redemption. That's why Jesus said, I knew you before. The foundations of the world. So when you look at this arch I'm showing you, and you look at this $20 bill, the same people that built the arches or that built, that built, did the $20 bill, they're the ones that put the Twin Towers dead center of the arch. Well, guess what those arches are? They're DNA strips. It's Cain and Abel. It's the wheat and the weeds. It's the sheep and the goats. It's the seed of the serpent, seed of the woman. It's the twins. And they, they, they blew him up. And it was a blood sacrifice to Satan under the arch. And it represents the arch of Baal, the entranceway to the temple of Baal, where they used to throw kids into the fire. And you're looking at your government that did this. I mean, this is mind boggling. They put, they put in the place of the Twin Towers. What did they put in the place? A one world freedom tower. And what's on the top? We remember, we rebuild, we come back stronger. WWW666. Their temple is rebuilt. That's what I'm trying to tell you. They're trying to, they're going to get rid of anyone that is a believer in God. Anyone that believes in Christ has got to go because they've got their new temple built. And so they don't want God in this world. Satan wants this world all to himself. And so, you know, my, my prayer for everybody is that you look at all these images that we brought forth tonight. You look at, you know, I mean, Zen's done so much work on helping people understand where we came from. I mean, I think, Zen, when did you write Lucifer, the father of Cain? 2010. Wow. I, you know, this information's been out for a while, but I'm telling you, it's coming to an end. The Bible says in the end, everything will be revealed. It's all out there, guys. And if you go look and you really look at what just got delivered tonight, and you just look at it and go, why in the world would there be an altar that's disguised as, quote, the St. Peter's you know, throne? Why would it be in the shape of a big dead sheep? Why would the angels be going into a vortex? 
because that's who we are. We're the food for this thing. And I don't want anyone to be food. I want everyone to make it out of here. I want everyone to get back home. But then there'll be those that are scoffers and haters. And just like Jesus said, if they hated me, they'll hate you. And I'm okay with that. But I'd rather have people hate me and speak the truth than to have people love me and be telling lies. Right. That's it. So, yeah, this is this is the most quintessential information, uh, you know, that's come out. I mean, between Zen and myself and some a few others that I've seen, not many, this is the information. You'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. Because Jesus is the truth. And then when you do know Jesus, you'll realize that everything's been turned upside down. Everything. And then it'll be easy. And that's what I'm trying to give you tonight. That's why I think Zen had me on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is the most important message to understand. And it's the it's a revelation that unites in full summation the from Eden to Armageddon, as my friend Dr. Joy um, who writes also about this, named her book, Beguiled, From Eden to Armageddon. This unites uh, our pre-existence with the war in heaven, with our condemnation to be incarnated into the flesh, to the enmity between the seed of the woman and the seed of the servant, to the soon coming harvest, and the regathering of the wheat for preservation, and the condemnation of the tares for burning. I mean, it unites everything. And unless you understand the beginning, you cannot make sense of the end because all of these secrets are scattered in between. And unless you have the key to unlock all of those verses and make sense of all of those passages, in my opinion, the scriptures, the gospels, they just do not make sense in the way that they are supposed to. Um, without this revelation, well, no, they can't. I mean, by default, Absolutely. they by default they can't even make sense because unless you have the one. See, Jesus said to you, it has been given to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. To them, it has not been given. That's why he speaks in parables, right? Because they were, you know, they're not supposed to know. And unless you have the indwelling Spirit of Christ in you, you will never understand this stuff. And you, that's why you have to reach out to him and you have to say, please, you know, for, I accept the, the free gift of God, which is eternal life in his son. And that's what you got to do to get this. You can't reason it out with just your head. You got to go with heart and soul. Jesus said, when you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. And that's what I'm trying to give you guys. I'm trying to, you know, put this information out there so you guys go, oh, my gosh, this was insane. I mean, yeah, this guy's a little hyper, but my gosh, look, <laughs> at, the, look at the information. I mean, look at it. It's mind destroying. I mean, what the heck? A big locust that's eating a bunch of angels? That's crazy. Wow. It's in the Bible. Wait a minute. All this stuff's in the Bible. That's what's really crazy. And now you got physical evidence of it. Yeah. yeah, and the way that it ties together with the World Trade Centers, the how there used to be two buildings and now the One World Freedom Center. I mean, um, the you know the twenty three chromosomes, and I mean just right. everything. It is just absolutely mind blowing. The way that um, the Sons of Cain, in being the authority uh, as far as over the Catholic Church and over the Illuminati and the New World Order. Uh, how they have encoded all these things um, into like even with the altar and all the things that we've been talking about tonight um, and being able to see those things, having you bring it out in to where you can actually look at it and see, you know, the entire Vatican, the, the church and the, um, the <laughs> courtyard as a snake. I mean, it is absolutely insane. It is. It's bananas. It's like, guys, the whole darn thing is a big snake with a crown. I mean, my gosh. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if the name Basilica means royal abode, okay, what's a royal abode? Palace. What lives in a palace? A king. Royal abode of the basilisk. And the word bas basilisk 
means a legendary serpent that kills with its breath or with its look, and it happens to the whole building turns into a snake with a crown. That's insane. And, That's and who's the serpent king? Revelation yeah. 12, that old serpent, it's, that you know, the the devil, the dragon, who beguiled the entirety of the world, who deceiveth the entirety of the world. He's the serpent king. Yes, he is. And he's got buildings that are built in in the shape of big upside down crosses with keyholes. And by the way, the keel is made out of black cobblestones, which is ser makes serpent skin. And the, and the inference is that the keel itself is covered by serpent skin. Get it? We're in serpent skin. That's the big one. It's like, oh my gosh, my skin is my prison. Right. Uh huh. That's why you need to be born of the spirit because you're walking around in serpent skin. And, and that's skin, what, yeah, yeah, wild. that's why it says uh, that Christ has come to rectify the fall. Uh, we've got two minutes, Johnny. I want to give you one more chance to give out your website and information and also where you do your radio programs uh, so people can go and listen to you and catch you um, when you're, you know, doing your live broadcast. Right, right. Well, uh, we we do a blog talk radio program. We used to be more regular, but recently it's been a little sporadic. I try and get two to three nights in a week, but in order to get uh, the schedule, you have to go to the This Is It Facebook group, and I think they can post that in your chat room. Um, but, uh, it's uh, to be honest, uh, I, can't, I can't even tell you what the Facebook group is right now, but you can go to www.blogtalk. Uh, radio, this is it, 4321 before the fire. And you can find out the information there. Um, anyway, we do a radio program two to three times a week. Um, I am cranking out videos. Uh, by the way, Zen Clay just left and we cranked out, I don't know, three hours of video. But I got, you know, the trolls are after me. So of my, course. yeah, my, my YouTube site is under, you know, a little bit of, it's going to be restored. I already filed counterclaims, and they're going to restore it, but it's probably going to take, uh, you know, maybe a couple weeks. However, the site is still up and running, and y'all y'all got to go to the, the YouTube site. It's called The Jonathan Kleck, uh, T-H-E, and then Jonathan, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N, and then Kleck, K-L-E-C-K. -E it's all one word, The Jonathan Kleck. Go and check out these videos that are coming out. They will blow your mind. I mean, they will literally blow your mind. You won't believe what's just coming on mainstream media right in front of your face. Because they don't care anymore. They know it's their world. They're like, it's our world. What are you going to do about it? Right, and, exactly. Uh, yeah. So anyway, that's it. And uh, man, Zen, I love you, brother. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for having me on. And I'm just so pumped up. Yeah, love you too, man. And no worries anytime. Well, uh, why don't, when, when are you uploading the video that you and Clay have done? Uh, why don't we do a, a follow up after I get a chance to check out all that? Sure. Well, it's actually uploaded on Clay's channel. All right. Um, and, uh, I think Dave can send you an email. I don't know if he has one site called the Faithful Berean. So I'm not sure. All right, well, we'll do a follow-up after I get a chance to check out all that. God bless all. Good night. Later, Johnny. Uh, thank you. Bye, Zed. God bless, man.